the stunning Taiwan barbit. These are diurnal birds, so it's trying to sleep among these branches. The beauty of a night hike is that you get to see all the nocturnal animals out, as well as get a closer look at some sleeping diurnal animals. So we've just begun stage six of the grand hike, and we're about to enter the dark forest. So hopefully we'll find something interesting here. And we've got something down here. A sleeping grass lizard, another diurnal animal. From the China University of Science and Technology, we ascend the trail up towards the Four Beasts Ridge. We're lucky to have some fairly warm weather in November. And this sleeping greater green snake is a good indication that the warmer weather animals are still out. These snakes are non-venomous and have a very mild disposition. I generally avoid handling them, but I think in this instance, it's a good opportunity to show how non-threatening snakes can be. In fact, these snakes feed on worms and other invertebrates, and will almost never bite people. Here's another unjustly feared animal, the giant golden orb weaver. Although their webs can be annoying to walk face first into, and that they are enormous, they too will seldom bite, and only possess a very weak venom. Okay. Oh. oh my god! Oh. I, 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 I. <laughs> oh. Then they can spider man. <laughs> yeah. Another interesting thing is that these giants are all females. The males are tiny, as you can see here. And not to be confused with the males, these tiny parasitic spiders. They look like the males, only their bodies are more rounded than elongated. They share her web and feed on some of the smaller bits that get caught. I guess she's okay with feeding a couple of tiny mouths. Here's a very small green tree viper. These are venomous, but you can see the triangular shaped head, which makes it easy to distinguish from the harmless greater green snake. As we ascend further up towards the ridge top, we can hear distant emerald green tree frogs. Though we've yet to spot one on the ground hike so far. Another relatively common species around Taipei that we've yet to encounter is one of these cute little slug snakes, Piraeus atayal. I'm glad we were able to find one. These are also harmless and never bite. They are nocturnal and feed on slugs and snails. After a short interaction, we set it back up on the branch where we found it. As we climb further, we of course encounter plenty of other interesting animals, including the beautiful Taiwan barbit. And another green tree viper. Perfect. This habu is the first ground snake that we've found so far tonight. Careful! Okay, everybody keep oh, sorry. a bit of distance. It's a habu. Only a little one. They are nocturnal and highly venomous. So it pays to watch where you're walking at night. We another tree snake. This is a square haired cat snake. The thing with these ones is that especially if you grab them a bit rough, they're known to be very, very bitey. Yeah. And the, these ones are just a little bit venomous. Mine where it bites you. Yeah. <laughs> don't want to, I mean, it's not gonna inject any venom unless it chews really hard on me. These nocturnal, arboreal snakes are incredible climbers. They typically hunt for lizards sleeping in the trees, or sometimes small birds. 
They're called cat snakes because of their cat-like eyes. They're mildly venomous, but not dangerous to humans. We enjoy some awesome night views of Taipei before we reach the summit. and begin making our way back down. There are a few moths out. A goose. Uh. You draw. <laughs> uh. But this death's head hawk moth caterpillar is a real stunner. Called death's head because of the scary face that the adult moths have on their thorax. A lot of people think caterpillars have a lot of legs, like more than six, but okay. these aren't actually legs. In mm -hmm. English, we call these pro legs. These aren't actually true legs. Mm -hmm. These ones are the legs. They have segments. It actually still has six legs only, mm -hmm. like any other oh. insect. And yeah, like the black thing here, it's, that's not an eye. Is that an eye? No, the eyes are actually very, very small. Mm -hmm. Most caterpillars have like fake eyes mm -hmm. to make themselves look a lot bigger. Yeah. They're actually very, very chill animals. So we're coming down from Jiu Wufang, uh, the peak. Soon after, the majority of our party decide to take a shorter route back to the city, as it's getting a bit late. Um, so here we are, about to part ways. Some of us are going to, well, some people are going to go back down Elephant Mountain, and whoever's brave and wants to have a tiring long night are going to continue on <laughs> the other way and finish the the sixth stage of the grand hike okay bye bye the trail back down the ridge reveals plenty more creatures another cat snake a green tree viper or two and more greater green snakes And of course, some cool moths. It looks like it's kind of like... Crash land. Yeah. Then we soon make it back down to civilization. From here, it's a combination of roads and short trails, as well as temples, shrines, Spooky cemeteries. <laughs> but there seem to be a lot of flying squirrels about. It is quite late as we ascend the trails around Fuzhou Shan. The cityscape is darker with Taipei 101's lights turned on. We meet another green tree viper at the top. And a few more creatures as we descend down to Fuyang Eco Park. But we're tired, so mainly focused on completing the hike at this point. At about seven and a half hours, it was a fairly long 10 kilometers for a Wednesday night after work. There you go. <laughs> All right, we made it to the end of stage six of the grand hike. Um, yeah, we're pretty knackered now, so pretty keen just to get home. Uh, so thanks for watching, and we'll see you on stage seven. Good night. <laughs>